Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott. I really hope you're having a great day today. I know I am. I'm at the Las Vegas Open, and I'm playing in the tournament for Conquest The Last Argument of Kings. Now, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an insight into what my army looks like and what my expectations are for this tournament. So let's go ahead and dive into my list. I think before we get into my list, there's one important thing to understand about me, and that is that I am not a hyper-competitive player. I enjoy putting together strong lists, and I enjoy challenging my opponents, and not just handing them a victory, but I'm not as concerned with making sure that my list is 100% optimized to output the most effective damage, or built around a tactic that's, you know, unbreakable and unbeatable. I'm not like that, and that is reflected in my list. There are areas where I probably could have made the list meaner, but I chose not to, because I wanted to go for a list that I would enjoy. Let's start off by talking a little bit about my Warlord. Now, I've taken the Stratagos as my Warlord for this army, and I've done this to gain access to his Supremacy ability, which allows me to count the Dark Power Pool as being one tier higher than what it currently is. This guarantees that I can always be in the tier that I want to be when I want to be there. Now, I've upgraded him with Tier 1 Regalia of the Old Dominion Retinue. This is going to allow him to take the item that I've given him, the Legio 1 Primigenia, which is giving his regiment a plus 2 Aura of Death. Now, on top of that, I've also given him Gladiator just to to make sure he's an efficient fighter. He is connected to a unit of legionnaires with five stands. The unit contains a leader, standard bearer, and the dark cenotaph, guaranteeing that my enemies are not going to be able to inspire while they're engaged with me. Then connected to his warband is a unit of four cataphractoid with a leader and a standard bearer. Now the idea with this is that this detachment of my army is designed to get up the board and tie up areas of the board that I want to control. The legionnaires and strategos are going to probably spend most of their games in the center of the board while the cataphractoid tie up some unit on either of the flanks. For my second and third warbands, I have two identical warbands containing an Arc Mandrite equipped with Oslia's Touch, which is going to give me access to some reasonably good healing for my army. Each Arc Mandrite is going to be escorted by a minimum size unit of Legionnaires with a leader and standard bearer. And then the core of my army comes in a unit of Bone Golems connected to each warband, which means I will have six Bone Golems total on the board. I'm hoping that I'll be able to use the Bone Golems to push the parts of the table that I need to control to score points, while also using them to clear out enemy units. My hope is that I'll be able to support them with the Archimandrite's healing, keeping them on the board as long as possible. But I'm also going to have some flexibility in that the Archimandrites are going to be able to maneuver pretty easily with the Legionnaires, so that they can go support other parts of the battlefield as needed. That brings us to the fourth warband for this army, which consists of a Hyra Deacon. Now, Hyra Deacons are very important. I've given this one Blasphemous Soma, which means that at the beginning of each round, I'll generate a Dark Power token for free. Now, on top of this, I've also given her Devoted to Haslia, which is going to guarantee that she gets to reroll sixes on her spellcasting actions, which should mean that Dark Supplication is successfully cast most rounds of the game, which means that she should be generating three Dark Power tokens each round. This is important to my army, as I need those Dark Power tokens tokens early on so that I can buff my army without taking too many casualties. Now she's being escorted by a minimum size unit of legionnaires with a leader and standard bearer. And then finally the warband has a unit of caryatids with three stands containing a leader. Now this is going to serve as my range support detachment of my army. The caryatids are probably going to hang out somewhere towards the center back line of the board, providing fire support to anywhere on the board that I need them to. And then the higher deacon is going to be removing stands from my army and generating dark power tokens for me while the Arc Mandrites heal back those stands. Let's talk a little bit about my expectations for this list. I don't expect to get first place. I'd be very surprised if I did. Um, I expect to be a little bit more in the middle of the player rankings. This list is strong in some aspects, but very weak in others. It doesn't do very well against ranged, and it doesn't like fighting against spires with lots of healing and drones. And that's mainly because while there are a few good damage dealers in my army, the list is built mostly around endurance and not getting tabled. Now, with that also comes another concern that I have with the army, and that is the time limits on the rounds at LVO. According to the event packet, time limits are going to be set to two hour rounds. In all of the games I've been practicing for the last few months with this list, I find that we usually take about two and a half hours to finish the game out to round 10. So that means that the area where my army is strongest is probably not going to be played out the way I want it to at the tournament. But I expect to have a lot of fun and I expect my opponents to really have to work for their victories. And that's my goal going into this is to make sure that they have a hard time beating me. 
Now, a little side note, it is kind of weird making this video right now. I know that by the time you guys watch it, the 2.0 army lists will have been released, and 2nd edition of Conquest will be fully underway. So I do want to talk a little bit about some of the things that will change how this army plays if you are to play it after LVO. Now, first and foremost, Legionnaires got quite a bit less durable with the changes to Memories of Old. Memories of Old in the new version of their rules only lasts until the end of the round, so it doesn't last until their next activation like it used to, which means that you're really only going to be using the Phalanx ability about half as often as you did before. Because if you're activating your Legionnaires later in the round, there's not as much value in using their Memories of Old ability. Now, in addition to this, the Dark Cenotaph that I've equipped to my Stratagos' Warband isn't going to be nearly the same application in the new rules. Instead of giving the unit dread, it's now going to make it so that the command stand in that regiment counts as two additional stands for the purposes of seizing objectives. This is going to shift the playstyle of that model so that instead of using it to be a battering ram and do a lot of damage, have a really durable unit, instead you're going to put that unit on an important objective and hope that you can make it survive long enough to score enough points to get ahead of your opponent. And then finally, the cataphract way in the new rules have been um, rebalanced quite a bit. They're more consistent in the new version of the rules, but they're consistently less impressive than they are in the older rules, at least in my opinion. And the same applies to the uh, caryatids. They're losing 10 inches of range, although their shots are staying the same, so those units might not perform the same way in this list going forward. So just be aware of that if you should decide to duplicate this list. So that about covers what I wanted to go over today with my list. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, go ahead and like it, and then subscribe to my channel so you can see future videos I make. Let me know if you guys like the uh, sort of tactical breakdown style of video. It's not something I've ever done before, but if you guys want me to break down units in the future, I'll try to do that. I'd like to give a special shout out to my channel members that make videos like this possible. I'd encourage you to consider becoming a channel member so you can gain access to exclusive extra perks like a members only discord and the opportunity to chat directly with me on a more personal basis. Anyway, you guys have an amazing day. I'm going to go continue playing in this tournament and I'll catch you in the next one.